Hello friends, thank you for watching this video. I am Muhammad, and today we're gonna be discussing how we can actually include SQLite into our minimal API. We're gonna be replacing an in-memory database that we have created previously, and we're gonna be utilizing SQLite. And then from there, we're gonna be updating some of the services to, to, in order for us to utilize SQLite. We're gonna be creating an application DB context. We're gonna be injecting it into our application. And then we're gonna be able to actually utilize SQLite as our database storage. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. It will really help the channel. As well, if you like to support me, please consider supporting me on Patreon or on buying me a coffee. It will really help the channel. Now, grab your cup of coffee and let's get started. So what are we going to be doing here is we're going to be taking a previously built uh, minimal API which has an in-memory database and we're going to be converting this in-memory database to a SQLite database. And we're going to be seeing how we can go through this process step by step. So if you want to learn how to build a minimal API with a simple CRUD operation, I have a different video which I'm going to be linking here somewhere where you can actually go and discover this for yourself. And uh, But for now, we're going to take that, uh, take that application as a stepping stone in order for us to actually accomplish this integration today. So as we can see here, we have our minimal API up and ready. And we can see from this, it's a to-do API, which we have five... Uh, uh, endpoints or basically five actions in order for us to uh, accomplish the five CRUD operations. So we are trying to do here the get, post, and uh, delete, and get all, sorry, get all, get by ID, uh, uh, post, uh, sorry, add, update, and delete. And these five CRUD operations, we're going to basically mapping them to five different routes inside our minimal API. And we can see here that we have utilized a group mapping, which is uh, available from .NET 7. And what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be replacing this in-memory database with an actual SQLite database. So here we can see that we are utilizing an item repository service. So if we go to it, we can see that we have a uh, dictionary which is representing our in-memory database. On some of the initialization, we can see that we currently have uh, some data that we are populating this in-memory database with. And then we can see that we have the five uh, uh, functions that we, have, that we need in order for us to accomplish the CRUD operation. And we can see we have get all, get by ID, add, update, and delete. So first things first, we're gonna go to our to-do API CS proj and we're gonna make sure that we are in .NET 7. And then, as we can see here, we are targeting .NET 7. And then inside our program.cs, we're going to go back to our terminal and we're going to start adding some of the packages. Uh, let me make this a bit bigger so it will be OK. Yeah. So first things first is we're going to add a SQLite package. So .NET add package Microsoft.NTT framework core.sqlite perfect and then we're going to put .NET add package Microsoft dot entity framework core dot design perfect so these are going to be the main two uh, NuGet packages that we're going to be utilizing and if we go here right now into our CS proj, we can see that we have these two available for us and we can see both of them are targeting version seven. Great. So next step is we're gonna go to our app settings and we're gonna be adding our connection string. So we're gonna add connection strings and we're just gonna call this default connection. And we're gonna basically provide a default connection string. So we're gonna say data source equal app.db very simple and then once we have done all of that let's go now back to our uh, cs proj and basically what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be creating a class where we, what we, we can do is we can create a new file we can call it uh, a new folder we can call it data and we can do the, the application db context from there uh, but for the simplicity sake we're just going to make it all in a single file but uh, you can actually create a, some, a completely different structure and basically put it there but again for simplicity we're going to put everything in the, in the main file so let's go all the way down and here we're going to be basically creating class we're going to call it API DB context. And we're going to inherit from the DB context uh, class. And now what we need to do is we need to fix these references. Perfect. And now we're going to basically build a table and we're going to utilize the item table that we uh, item record in order for us to do that. So we're going to put public virtual 
DV set item. I will gonna call it items. Again, get and set. And then we're gonna create a constructor. And it's gonna be for the API DB context. And it's gonna take basically the DB configuration db contacts sorry configurations or db contacts option and it's going to take the api db context and we're going to say options and then we're going to pass them to the base class okay see if this is clear yes and let's put this here okay so here, let's see what is it saying. Items must not be null. Okay, that should be fine. So once we have done all of that, now let's go back to our uh, application here and let us inject this inside our, uh, inject our application DB context inside our application. So what we did here is we have created an application DB context. And similarly, if we're gonna utilize this inside our application, what we need to do is we need to actually inject it into our application inside our DI container and basically let our application know that there is a DB context that we need to actually uh, take into consideration. And what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna be basically configuring our DB context and injecting it into our DI container. So let's do it here. Uh, yes, let's do it here. And what we can say is we can say uh, first let's get the connection string. We can say equal builder dot configuration dot get connection string. And I think we call the default connection. Let's double check that. Yeah, default connection. Let's copy this. And then what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna go again to builder dot services dot add db context and we're gonna say we're gonna utilizing the api db context and then we need to specify the options that we want for it and basically here we're gonna put options let's put another new line options dot use sqlite and then we need to pass our connection string as simple as that oops now let us build this and let's see what are we gonna see now. Dot not build. Perfect, we can see it's built succeeded. And basically right now what we did is we actually created our DB context and we have attached to our application, but that's not enough. What we need to do is we need to create some kind of a migration script and that migration script will basically be able to translate our C sharp code into actually SQL that uh, will be responsible for creating our database. And once we create this migration script, what we need to do is we need to execute it. So first of all, we create a migration and then we execute it by running a database update command, which basically check if a database exists or not. And if it does exist, it will actually implement those changes. If it doesn't exist, it will create the database and then it will actually implement those changes. So, so let's do dot .NET EF migrations add, and we're gonna say initial underscore migration. And we can see build has started. We can see it has completed. And we can see here that we have a new folder called migrations. And this migration folder, if we open it up, we can see that we have a table which has gonna be created called items. We have three columns. And we can see that the ID is an integer, title is a text, and the completed is an integer, which is gonna be reflected back as a Boolean, which is completely fine. And we can see that we have a primary key automatically set for us. Great. So now that we have created our migrations, before we do execute it, we can see here that in the left hand side, we don't have to have an app.db SQLite file. But now once we run .NET EF database update, once that is running, all of a sudden here, we can see that we have an app.db created for us. And this app.db is basically in essence our database now. And because here what happened is uh, entity framework, check if it exists or not, because it did not exist, it created it for us. And then once it created it for us, it implemented or basically created that table for us inside the, uh, created this uh, table inside this database. So, so we're gonna put underscore context and then we need to initialize it here. We're going to say API DB context, context. And then all we're going to see here is underscore context equal context. 
And then once we have initialized this, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna update all of that. So we're gonna say underscore context dot items and we don't need values anymore to list. Uh, let's update this. So we're gonna say here underscore context dot items dot first or default. Uh, should we make it any let's make it synchronous first or default uh, and we need to pass the condition x dot id equal equal id for example and we're gonna say if this equal to null uh, we're gonna return null okay, let's put this in a new line Else we're gonna be returning the underscore contacts dot items dot first and we're gonna pass the x x dot id. So that's something okay, equal equal id, I forgot that. And the other one here we're gonna do is we're gonna update this. So instead of adding it in this matter, we're gonna put underscore contacts dot items dot add obj oops and what we need to do also we need to do save changes so let's change this like this and this will be equal to underscore contacts dot save it changes async or save it changes it's a simple api we don't really want to make it async right now as for the update uh, let us do the same thing so what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna try to look for it first. So we're gonna put var uh, obj exist equal cat by id, and we're gonna pass the object dot id. So here we're reutilizing some of the functionality that we have added, and we're gonna say if uh, obj exist equal equal to null. Actually, not equal to null. Yeah, if it's not equal to null, what we're going to be doing is we're going to utilize it. And here we're going to say if it's not equal to null, we're going to say object exist dot. Actually, we can say underscore context dot update uh, object. Actually, we can say update obj. Perfect. Oops. And lastly, the delete also, we can just make it as that. And we can say underscore, let's use the same logic here. So let's copy this. And at the end uh, here, what we need to say is, oh wait, I forgot that, sorry, unit, uh, sorry, context dot save changes without the await because it's not an async request. Uh, here what we can say instead of update we can say delete or remove I think yeah remove and here we need to make sure it is the object exists and finally let's copy this one here uh, we don't really need the semicolon at the end so let's build this And here we can see basically what we did is we have updated our current uh, service, which was basically as simple as uh, just utilizing the in-memory database to something else, which basically it's kind of utilizing the DB context. And we can see here how we have updated it and we have injected our DB context into our web application. So now let's run this. Okay, we have a problem. Let's see what's the issue. Okay, so uh, we need to change the injection of our service. So we can make it as add scoped. Okay, perfect, now it's running. Now let's go back here. Let's go to our web browser and let's refresh. We still have the five items, so let's first try to get all, and this should be empty right now. Exactly, we don't have anything. Now let's try to post something, try it out. So ID one, uh, say uh, clean 
the dusk, for example, is completed, we're gonna make it false, execute. We got a 201, and now if I come here and execute this, we can see that I got another one. Uh, let me add another item to, I'm gonna say here, uh, have breakfast, execute, and now, okay, that was the response. We got a 201, perfect. And now if I click on execute, we are able to get it, exactly what we expected. And uh, let's try another one. So let's try the get, exactly here. We're gonna put ID one, we should see uh, clean the desk. So as you can see here, that actually switching between an in-memory database to a SQLite is a fairly straightforward process. All we had to do is install some packages, updating, uh, update uh, any database utilization, which was basically an in-memory to utilize a SQLite. So basically we have, up to have update our repository. So let's take a look at that. So as we can see here that uh, I, we have basically updated the repository to take advantage of the API DB context. What we have else have done, we have injected uh, this uh, DB context into our application and basically we have created an application DB context. So what we were able to do here is basically uh, add a few bits of code, which basically gonna be responsible for managing the communication between our application and our database. And we have simply injected it inside our application. And we can see here that with 113 lines of code, what we were able to is we have created a full functioning API. We were able to create uh, five main CRUD operation for our table. We have created a DB context. We were created a DB service. As well, we were able to actually have everything uh, up and running within our minimal API. And we were able to actually integrate a full scope database into our minimal API with a few lines of code and a few packages. So I hope this video was helpful. Please like, share, and subscribe if you like this video. It will really help the channel.